Drake May will get you fired. Drake May's the kind of player gets you fired. I know he can be the best quarterback in the country. Drake May's a hard one. He's a hard one to figure out. Welcome to my sixth and final evaluation of the 2024 quarterback class. I've done Spencer Rattler, JJ McCarthy, Bo Nix, and Michael Penix. And I've got one more in me, Drake May. Why am I stopping on Drake May in April? <laughs> These in-depth evaluations take time. They require me to retreat into my chambers where I watch every snap, not just throws from these prospects, these quarterbacks dating back to elementary school. How do I get elementary school tape of Drake May? Not important. Just know that I'm no longer allowed within 300 feet of any school, which is a contributing factor to this being the final QB evaluation of the year. Also, I feel like we have so much information on Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams already. I like the scrappy dogs, not the thoroughbreds, okay? Now, NFL scouts may not have rendered their final judgment on Drake May, but I have. Well, this was Daniel Jeremiah a month ago on Drake May. Drake May is a hard one. He's a hard one to figure out. Drake May lost top receivers and saw his offensive line struggle as well. And if there aren't good options for you to throw to, uh, what evaluators start to ask is this. You know, his tape wasn't great this year, but again with him, like you freeze it when you get to the top of the dropping, like I don't know what, there's no answers in here. And that's why the Drake May evaluations I think are all over the place. And while May was for the better part of a year decidedly the second ranked QB in this class behind Caleb Williams, we've gotten bored and are now talking ourselves into May dropping out of the top two and potentially even the top three. I'm going to tell you why I think that's silly, but why I hope it happens anyway. Are we going balls deep into Drake May? <laughs> Today's show is sponsored by Good Chop and my code, that's good120. Now that code will get you $120 off your first four boxes. What's Good Chop? It's a box of meat that you can customize, which is then delivered to your home. It's cheaper and easier than going to the store, and I have found the quality of meat is much better than the store I shop at. It's why I've been using Good Chop for a full year now. I'm particularly picky with chicken. And the simplest way to put it is Good Chop's chicken always looks fresh. I can't say the same for the store. All the meat is sourced in the US of A, and it never has antibiotics or added hormones. Now, I smell smoked wings last month, and this month I baked some organic chicken breasts. My secret is to season them with everything and then put chunks of butter on top of them. Grilling season is pretty much here, and now is the perfect time to try Good Chop. So go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use my code, that's good 120, or the link below for $120 off your first four boxes. They offer 100% money back guarantees, so uh, there's no risk to try. And in life, pretty much everything has a risk, right? All right, some background on the man himself, Draketh Mayeth. He cuts the figure of an athlete. He's six foot five, he moves well, and he's got a rifle for a right arm. Most importantly, he's got that QB Mahomesy body. Not too hard, not too soft, a little supple, just right. Oh my goodness, that was Mahomes-esque! Just throwing it up for grabs to Downs, who takes it into the end zone. Comparison that I've heard from a personality standpoint is Phillip Rivers. He's also got the pedigree. In fact, he comes from North Carolina royalty. His dad, Mark, was the UNC quarterback for five years in the mid 80s. It's me, OJ Mahomes. While his brothers, Luke and Bo, played on the Tar Heels basketball team, Luke specifically was a part of North Carolina's 2017 national championship team before taking on a bigger role in his last couple years with the Heels. His oldest brother, Luke, is a Carolina legend, hitting one of the most famous shots our heel basketball history. He's got a lot in common with Bo Nix in terms of college football bloodlines. Growing up in Huntsville, North Carolina and coming out of Myers Park High School in Charlotte, it just made sense that Drake May would go to UNC. Except it didn't. May was a five-star recruit at, at quarterback, and when you're that kind of prospect, the big schools are going to come calling. And when Nick Saban shows up in your living room, it's hard not to listen. 
It's also hard to get him to leave from what I've heard. He's a very lonely man, old Nick Saban. Now, May originally committed to Bama, but UNC kept calling. They brought out the big guns. They showed up to his house, brought him to a basketball game where he got to meet Michael Jordan, and eventually they flipped him. The biggest factor in all of that was legendary head coach Mac Brown staying with the Tar Heels. Brown, of course, helped Vince Young and Colt McCoy become top-tier college QBs and he was going to do the same with Drake May after Sam Howell, of course. Also, nobody show him what happened to Vince Young or Colt McCoy after college. Now, May redshirted his freshman year in 2021, appearing in just four games and attempting only 10 passes. But once Howell was out the door and onto the NFL, he had a chance to battle for the starting job with Jacoby Criswell. And I think you know how that battle went because this video is about Drake May and not Jacoby Criswell. Wait, hold on. Yeah, it's, it's Drake May. I had to double check. I get confused. Now, his first career start, Drake May, was essentially on easy mode against Florida A&M. May threw for nearly 300 yards, five touchdowns, becoming the first Tar Heels QB to do that in his first career start. In his first three games, all wins, May had thrown for 11 touchdowns and just one pick. The tight end escaped to the left. Little Patrick Mahomes. His first real challenge, though, was against Notre Dame in week four, and despite losing by a pair of touchdowns, May still threw five more TDs in that loss. He was officially on the radar. And personally, I want to know what it feels like to throw five touchdowns and still lose. Probably like winning the lottery and realizing your penis is still small. May had 22 touchdowns in his first five starts, the most in any five game stretch in program history. And after the Notre Dame loss, May and the Tar Heels reeled off six straight wins before finally losing a three point game against NC State and getting routed by Clemson in the ACC championship game. In those two losses, just one touchdown and three interceptions for Drake May. That final stretch aside, it was pretty easy to see why this guy was being touted as a future second overall pick with the chance to sneak into the top spot. Well, in any draft that didn't include someone like Caleb Williams anyway. He would have been penciled into that first overall pick without Caleb. Maybe even pinned in, sharpied in perhaps? But things have changed in a year. There's still certainly a chance May goes off the board at number two, but it's looking less and less likely as we approach the draft. So what exactly happened? Or is that a smokescreen? May went from 38 touchdown passes and seven interceptions in his first year as a starter to just 24 TDs and nine picks in year two. Both those numbers deserve a little more context though. May lost two of his top wideouts, Josh Downs and Antoine Green to the NFL. Downs was drafted by the Colts and Green by the Lions. Over 1,800 combined yards and 18 touchdowns were gone. To make matters worse, his top target transfer, Tez Walker, missed out on the first four games of the season after he was initially denied eligibility. And here's the catch 22, right? If you have great receivers as a college quarterback, everyone's gonna say, oh, those receivers made you. What are you gonna be like without those receivers in the NFL? But if you play pretty good without elite talent, everyone will say, those guys made you. See, we told you, you're nothing without them. It's why talking heads like Merrill Hodge feel comfortable saying dumb shit like, Great man gets you fired. Great man's kind of player gets you fired. That's any quarterback who doesn't work out. And spoiler, a lot of them don't. His last game, the NC State game, was the most embarrassing display I'd ever seen from a guy who's supposed to be an elite franchise quarterback. The supporting cast around Drake May last year was not on par with 2022. But even still, through six games, the Tar Heels were undefeated. May was putting up good, but not eye-popping numbers with a diminished group of skill position players. Then it all fell apart. North Carolina lost five of its last six games against Power Five opponents, and May's numbers were looking pedestrian at best. Luckily for him, Caleb Williams also had a disappointing final stretch to his career at USC. So a lot of May and UNC's struggles flew under the radar because May wasn't painting his nails or crying after games. Unfortunately for May, however, if he had gone on a tear while Williams was struggling, he could have made the number one overall conversation a little more complicated. 
a little more mysterious but that didn't happen. How do you break it to your teachers that you're the quarterback and you need preferential treatment? I try not to. But at the same time, Jaden Daniels had blown up and won the Heisman. Michael Penix's draft stock went up after carving up Texas and JJ McCarthy won a natty championship. The 2024 quarterback class was no longer a two horse race, even if Williams was still seen as the consensus number one pick. Tier 1 used to be Williams and May, with Williams as 1A. Now it's Williams in a tier of his own with Daniels, May, and McCarthy all jockeying for position in Tier 2. And as of late, it's starting to look like May is falling behind. And I wanted to find out why. Every year, there's a rapid rise up the board, and it's very clearly J.J. McCarthy this year. But... Every action requires an opposite and equal reaction, according to my science teacher. And now May is starting to slide. We've seen it before. Aaron Rodgers fell, Matt Leinert fell, Brady Quinn fell, Will Levis had a thousand yard stare on that couch in the green room while he slipped out of the first round. I certainly don't think May is going that far down the board, but it seems more likely than not He's conceded the second overall pick to Jaden Daniels based on just about every mock draft that's come out since April. In fact, a lot of them suggest that he's been blacklisted by McCarthyism himself. He's going to be leaped by JJ. It seemed like May would be a perfect fit for the Patriots at pick three, but recent reports are suggesting that the Patriots want to upgrade their barren wasteland of a roster before submitting a quarterback to that kind of situation. A really, really polite fuck you to Jacoby Brissett from the Patriots when you think about it. Now there's plenty of opportunity for teams like Minnesota, Denver, and the New York Giants to move up, but now it feels like a coin flip as to whether they take McCarthy or May. Though I'd still give the slight edge to Drake May. It's fair to reassess May as a prospect after a down year, even factoring in the changes around him on offense. He's got serious tools, but he's also plenty flawed. The first thing his critics will point to is his footwork, which can be a little bit all over the place. Joseph Acosta from SB Nation wrote, May's footwork isn't bad per se, it's just more vibey, which fits the air raid offense he operated under first Phil Longo, then Chip Lindsey while at North Carolina. Footwork is obviously huge, it affects accuracy and timing, but it's also not a death sentence. It's correctable. I also don't trust anyone who calls footwork vibey. Not for a single fucking second. Next, you're gonna tell me his arm strength is a mood, aren't ya? Footwork can be taught and fine-tuned in the NFL. If you don't believe me, just watch Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen in college. May is going to get drafted in spite of his footwork and occasional what the fuck was that type of throws because of everything else he has going for him. And by everything else, I mean his prototypical size, his velocity, the arm talent, his pocket maneuvering, his toughness, and oh shit, that's right, he can throw the ball with his left hand too. Out of this draft class, only Michael Penix threw more left-handed touchdowns than Drake May, and Pinnock sure as hell didn't throw any with his right hand. That's just a fact. So, Drake, now you've got a left-handed touchdown pass? Yeah, um, <laughs> sure, man. Jeremy was just saying that. I just had the finger roll. Not a lefty. I guess some, something's working. I mean, he switched from, from righty, but, uh... And while I made it clear in the Michael Pinnock episode that I despise left-handed QBs, I do respect guys who are left-handed by choice from time to time. It seems that May isn't a, a cut and dry prospect. He's something of a challenging evaluation. And if you don't believe me, here's Lance Zerline of NFL.com's take. He's something of a challenging evaluation. And if you don't believe me, here's Brandon Perna of That's Good Sports Take. Okay, here's what Lance really said. Challenging evaluation with top flight measurables and tools, but inconsistencies that create a lower floor. May's size and arm talent jump off the tape immediately. He can make every throw, but he will try to make throws that he shouldn't have attempted. The gunslinger mentality creates a fearlessness that can turn into interceptions, but it will also allow him to win in tight windows and make splash throws that get crowds and evaluators on their feet. It sounds like there's a lot to hang your hat on with Drake May, but plenty to temper your expectations. 
It also honestly sounds like a Drew Locke evaluation to me. Now, Zerline also went on to note that May has an inefficient throwing motion and that he puts a lot of balls in the dirt. The good news, of course, is that in the NFL, he'll be playing on grass and turf, but never dirt. One thing that does ease a lot of concerns that I or anyone else have about May is that for everything he lacks right now, he's only 21. He's the second youngest QB expected to go in the first or second round of this draft, just a few months older than one J.J. McCarthy, but with a much larger throwing sample size than J.J. 952 attempts to J.J. 713. May has two healthy years under his belt in the ACC. That's a lot of positive experience, but still plenty of room to grow. May has been compared to Josh Allen a lot recently, and while that's certainly a lofty aspiration, I don't think it's actually that far off. Allen is more of a freak athlete, but at the same time, May is a more refined passer than Allen was at 21 years old. And of course, we have to remember that Josh Allen didn't become Josh Allen until his third year in the NFL. Drake May can buy himself a lot of time if he simply hurdles a bitch as a rookie in the open field. Okay, try that, Drake. As always, with these kinds of QBs, their success is largely going to be predicated on where they end up and whether or not they go to a coach and team that has the resources and patience to allow them to develop properly. As a Broncos fan, I would be pretty damn excited to land Drake May, even if it involves a trade up of significant proportions. But then again, I just want any quarterback at this point, most certainly will talk myself into whoever ends up with. Denver. Now, I think once you get anointed as a top pick like May, it's hard to really lose that status. And maybe May's play from last season should be concerning. Are we trying to hold on to the idea that he's the second best QB in the draft more than say the fact that he really is? Is that the same weird, undefinable thing we do with prospects that also has us easily seeing how J.J. McCarthy could be a lot better than Drake May simply because there's more mystery there with J.J.? Or is it because J.J. went to a bigger, better college football school and won the last game of the season? I don't know. If I were trying to match May with a team that's going to help him succeed, I really wouldn't wish New England on him or my worst enemy for that matter, which happens to be Tom Brady, oddly. Okay, calm down, all right? We're in church. This isn't a place for the Patriots. The team that's both in the market for a quarterback and has the resources to help him reach his ceiling is probably the Minnesota Vikings, a team that's already made one trade to get into striking distance and grab a tier two quarterback later this, this month. You've got an offensive head coach with two years under his belt, an incredible receiving trio in Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, and Jordan Addison, plus an average offensive line, which is a luxury May certainly did not have last year at North Carolina. All signs point to the commanders taking Jaden Daniels at the moment with the second overall pick, but I think that's actually one of the more grounded situations you can get in that draft slot between veteran head coach Dan Quinn and a seasoned OC like Cliff Kingsbury who runs an air raid scheme that Drake May is already familiar with. Wherever Drake May lands, he will feel like the most boring QB selected in this draft class, but that does not mean he will be the wrong quarterback taken. And now we get this weird game of chicken. Are the Patriots gonna move back? Is a team trying to trade with the Patriots to get to three to take Drake May or JJ McCarthy? If that team moves, is another team gonna aggressively go to four to <laughs> draft May or McCarthy, the guy who doesn't go? But if we do get four QBs going with the first four picks in this draft, it's going to be thrilling. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Don't forget, we got Rattler, we got McCarthy, we got Penix, we got Knicks. All those videos are available here on That's Good Sports. Subscribe and watch them all, please.